Chess.com is here with World Championship Challenger Jan Nepomnishi, who has graciously decided to have an interview with us a few days after uh, the World Championship has ended. So thank you, Jan. Uh, now, yesterday was the first day of the last seven months where you didn't have to prepare for the World Championship. All of that weight was off your shoulders. How did you spend it? Uh, way, uh, way better, I believe, than uh, previous half a year. Yeah, but, but uh, I mean, uh, it's... Uh, it was quite a new feeling, but uh, yeah, just what can I say? I slept uh, relatively well, and uh, just uh, you know, finally I had uh, not just uh, not just work, uh, you know, during uh, during the daytime or nighttime. So I mean, in general, it uh, you know feels uh, feels a little bit better, but uh, still, you know, the taste of uh, ash <laughs> in your mouth is um, probably it will. Uh, it will stay for uh, quite some time. Understandable. Well, again, you've uh, you've got nearly to the highest mountain in chess, as you know. Um, now, did you have any temptation to open up your laptop and get into any of the games, especially game six yesterday? Or are you really going to leave that for a couple of weeks before you revisit these games? No, I just analyzed, uh, you know, the last round game maybe to, uh, but uh, I mean, especially the opening part, because okay, it was, I guess, quite an interesting idea, quite an interesting move forger, which uh, was uh, I mean somewhat uh, somewhat new from uh, from black side, but uh, I mean okay, I guess this was like early in the morning, and then okay, I just closed the laptop, and uh, I guess you know the chess uh, trying to understand uh, what what was like in in uh, in chess terms, uh, what happened in chess terms. It's like it's surely I, I need some some break before I will uh, start with work. Yeah, we've already asked about that at the post-game press conference, the actual chess. Uh, getting back to your team, you obviously had Sergei Karyakin on your team. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong if you had Peter Lecko on your team. Um, but both of those players have played for World Championships, and I'm sure they tried to describe to you what it was going to be like to be in the tank. Not chess moves, but just that experience. Um, was there uh, preparation for what it was like to play in the tank? Was it what you expected, or was it somehow different? Uh, well, I would say that uh, Sergei just uh, joined us, uh, you know, the last minute, so basically for the last, uh, I think, month, and it was mainly about, like, some trainings, uh, which probably, as it seems right now, uh, were too intense and uh, maybe not too well-timed, because, okay, normally you have to, uh, I don't know, have probably some break, uh, so, I mean, okay, you can, uh, perhaps you can also play some blitz uh, or bullet online, but in general, yeah, if you try to play some uh, some serious uh, or semi-serious games, uh, not like Blitz, but uh, I mean, just uh, in training purposes, it's um, maybe yeah. There is also a limit. Yeah, you shouldn't be too you know too swallowed into into how the into this whole topic. Uh, so yes, uh, I mean, indeed, uh, it was quite instructive to speak with Peter and uh, speak with Sergey about uh, the World Championship match experience. But uh, what I understood, uh, I mean. <laughs> Uh, only after the match has started that every match is unique and uh, I mean uh, you can even imagine yourself in someone's shoes but uh, at, uh, you know at the same time uh, I mean the opponent can be different and even if it's the same person I mean this uh, this person can play a completely different chess and uh, have you know a completely different strategy so I mean in general okay some general advice is like I don't know not to uh, don't uh, even pay too much attention to what people say. Like, okay, don't uh, get too busy with some social media and so on and uh, and so on. But I mean, okay, these are gen these are just general words. So I mean, of course, I you know I asked uh, a few a few questions. Uh, I asked you know Vladimir Kramnik, okay, what uh, what is his uh, what are his thoughts? But uh, yeah, sadly we <laughs> uh, couldn't work this time. But uh, you know. Uh, maybe sometimes in the future, but uh, I mean, of course, uh, a lot of uh, guys, they gave me a lot of advices and some of them had a World Championship match experience, some of them not. And uh, yeah, perhaps uh, nowadays I would, today I would say that maybe uh, it was like a little bit too much, you know, try to uh, do everything correctly according to, you know, all this information you get. Uh, because anyway, um, once again, every, every Tournament is more or less unique, and every match is especially, especially every match is unique, and uh, you got to prepare to a whole new situation. Like, and it's a little bit, uh, you know, unfortunate uh, decision to, you know, to try to 
uh, build uh, your you know preparation onto the experience of another people. And something Kramnik did not have to deal with was social media. Uh, Sergey was playing for the World Championship in the social media age. Were you opening up your phone at all just to read what people said? I mean, it's pretty hard to not touch your phone for three weeks. Uh, well, I opened, but uh, basically for some sports, uh, I don't know, for some sport results, like okay, some food for some uh, football championships and so on. And uh, I mean, uh, obviously, okay, if you enter some sports portal, you see some uh, some news. But I was trying not to, you know, look into this, you know, comment section and so on. So you know what was going on. But uh, I guess uh, okay, at least now when I mm, uh, finally yeah installed uh, my social networks back onto my iPhone, I think yeah, I got like quite a lot of for support, and um, I'm pretty I'm pretty thankful for uh, to, to to all these people because I mean. Uh, yeah, this really motivates you to to, to work further, even uh, after <laughs> it produced something not that brilliant. And I asked you in the middle of the match, was any part of playing the World Championship fun? And I think you basically said it, it's dependent on the result. Now that we're done, can you look back on any part of the actual playing of the match and describe it as fun? Or is that too, uh, too loose of a word for such an experience? No, obviously, obviously, I uh, really like playing chess, and uh, some of the games, uh, I mean, game two, I, I believe, especially, was really tense, and uh, also, I believe, despite the result, game six was very interesting, so, I mean, it uh, was not so much fun, especially in the last uh, couple of hours, but uh, anyway, you know, when you play such a complex game, it's uh, against a very strong opponent, it's, it's always, you know, in some words, uh, in some meaning, it's always fun. And uh, you know you really enjoy the process, yeah. You know you really enjoy it, uh, as it goes. Uh, so it's uh, it's a big fight. But uh, yep, somehow most of the games. Uh, I'm not even speaking about okay the second part of uh, the match. It's uh, it's not about the result. I mean it was like quite boring and uh, yeah it was like uh, some short opening uh, discussion and then okay probably one of the sides, go, you know gets some pretty tiny advantage. Uh, but uh, yeah, this just leads nowhere but, but to a draw. Yeah, so this is uh, you know not so not so you know exciting, but you know some uh, some really interesting games, some wild crazy positions was uh, some what I I really enjoyed. Yeah, um, and what about a totally different kind of fun? We should let the viewer know. Sometimes during our interview, you're going to hear the propellers of a plane mm. because we're right by Skydive Dubai, and what they can't see is a beautiful view of Jumeirah Beach. Um, mm. Would you ever do anything crazy in the next couple of days, like go skydiving? Um, I, I really don't know. So so far, I still need to attend the closing ceremony. Yeah. So uh, after this, I surely will um, will will consider these options. But uh, yeah, I, I, as for me, I actually have never tried any, any you know any extreme sports, uh, you know any of these uh, kind of adventures. So well, why not? Getting back to chess, it's been about fifteen years since Russia has held the world championship. Did you feel any added pressure to win for your country? I wouldn't say it was an added pressure, but uh, yeah, as for me, I was just trying to uh, do my best, and uh, I mean, as it seems to me now, I really tried too hard, so this uh, was, you know, also necessary to measure, you know, uh, you know, your energy level at some point, because uh, I know, I know, kind, kind of, and I thought that perhaps for the last, uh, you know, roughly four months, I really didn't have, a, you know, a day off. And uh, I mean, once you get used to this, uh, you know, style of living, yes, yeah, so or hard preparation, yeah, like uh, some, some very strict schedule and so on. Uh, once you get used, I mean, it, it seems that that's, it's pretty much all right, yeah. So you like uh, you live like this forever. But in general, I mean, wh when it comes, you know, to to the showtime, uh, I guess uh, sometimes you just lack. Your energy because it's not like I lived in this. Uh, I mean, compare, comparing with Magnus, I guess he more or less uh, has this type of uh, schedule like for past like ten years, roughly. Maybe 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 more. Yeah, but for me it was uh, quite a new experience. So I guess uh, it was uh, slightly over optimistic to, I mean, uh, train that hard. I mean, of course, of course, it was extremely useful. Uh, I mean chess-wise, sport-wise, I mean, health-wise, and so on. Uh, but, yeah, maybe, you know, there is uh, some kind of a burnout, which uh, cannot be... I mean, okay, I couldn't foresee it, but, okay, now I see it's, uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a thing you should be, re re you know, really, care you're really careful about. And, uh, I mean, 
uh, returning to your question, uh, of, uh, I mean, of course, yeah, okay, quite some huge expectations. And, I mean, you know, first of all, from, uh, you know, they come from inside, not from, uh, you know, from some people who, like, uh, say, like, uh, let's return crown to Russia and so on. But in general, yeah, it's absolutely mm, not as uh, important to me as, you know, if you speak from my inner expectations. And uh, I would say uh, this, uh, I mean, it, it was really high. So, also, uh, this probably doesn't help you uh, too much. But, uh, I mean, it, of course, it helps you to focus to on your preparation, yeah, like to... Uh, so, basically, your life changes uh, quite a lot. And, uh, I mean, you start to uh, do everything differently. But, uh, yeah, in the end, uh, sometimes it's, you know... <laughs> uh, very useful to slow down a bit. The biggest topic of discussion in the last 24 hours has been the revealing that Daniil Dubov was on Magnus Carlsen's team. And mm -hmm. Of course, we know that he is Russian. Is it? Do you feel it's okay for one of your countrymen to help your opponent? Well, uh, somehow I wasn't sure about uh, this uh, until game two. Uh, but uh, when I saw this OK95 idea, it's a typical idea from Daniil. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I had quite a mixed feelings because, I mean, it's not about like being countrymen because, I mean, okay, obviously we have uh, quite a lot of strong grandmasters and uh, uh, some of them work with each other. But uh, speaking of uh, Daniil, I guess uh, we worked together like a few years ago for quite some time. So, I mean, uh, I thought he would rather, you know, uh, you know, be in the commentators team. But, um, uh, you know, on the other hand... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, out of our team we should uh, probably thank him because, uh, you know, these biggest chances, they arrived after his uh, brilliant novelties, yeah, like okay, this 95 uh, in Catalan and also, you know, the second game, like the semi-Catalan, semi rating semi actually game six. Okay. Yeah, was also quite... Uh, <laughs> uh, so is he, I, a, double I was, is he uh, a double agent? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he's a double agent, but uh, yeah, obviously, obviously the... You know, the, um, the results of his work were quite favorable for us. Would you feel comfortable being on a national team with him at a future Olympiad? No, I don't think about this, but uh, I think uh, it's just, it just works. So, I, uh, being given a chance, I'd like to congratulate him with uh, some, some nice results of his work. Uh, what about your team of seconds? Uh, are you ever going to reveal the, the full list, or do we already know the full list? I think uh, the full list won't be revealed, but uh, comparing with the uh, candidates, I would say that um, uh, Evgeny Tomaszewski joined us for this uh, for this event. Uh, okay, but uh, okay, Petr Leko, of course, of course, was there. Uh, Ildar Hayrulin, Vladimir Potkin, who also presented, uh, who was also presented here. And uh, yeah, also some other names, but uh, yeah. So, so 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 far, I'm not, I'm not going to reveal uh, everybody. Uh, but uh, I would give very huge credit to my team because I guess like opening wise and chess wise, um, I think uh, I can't say it was like absolute dominance, but uh, I think uh, if we say about the, if we speak about the opening battle, uh, I guess it was uh, you know quite uh, in general was quite favorable for us. Yeah, I think that's definitely the case. Um, now, uh, you've talked a few times about Magnus's overall strategy surprising you a little bit. Um, what about yours? Do you feel like you played a little more restrained than you would if you had to do this match all over again? I don't, I, I don't know, but I mean, okay, in general, of course, uh, I did uh, a lot of just work. It was also part of the work was not only uh, learning new openings, but also trying to adjust my style uh, to a match. So, I mean, of course, uh, the best strategy uh, is uh, first of all is not to lose, but uh, once it happens, of course uh, you have to adjust. But uh, you know, in general, um, I have to point out that uh, it's hard to me. You know, I didn't really analyze the previous match. Uh, I mean, comparing it with this one, uh, but I would say that uh, this time uh, Magnus' play was incredibly precise. Uh, I mean, uh, in general, yes. So maybe he was a little bit. Uh, I don't know. He played a little bit too risky with white in, in general. Yeah. So uh, he surely gave me some chances, but as black, I mean, he just. Uh, it was like quite impressive. So, despite like getting some worse position in the opening, uh, you know, basically <laughs> more or less every time, uh, he just uh, played, uh, I think, like four or five top copy choices in a row. And uh, you know, this story 
basically repeated many times. So in most, at least okay, in, in most of our anti-martial games, in uh, the game in the English opening, so this was like quite impressive. So just I didn't feel that I had some some real pressure. Maybe we might, maybe except perhaps game five, but I don't think it was like anything uh, too too brilliant. But okay, it was like sort of a sort of some perspective to to, to play on. Uh, but uh, yeah, in general, uh, I believe. Uh, a lot uh, has changed after the game six because, uh, I mean, obviously making all the draws uh, was not an option uh, anymore. Uh, but uh, on the contrary, he just started to playing strictly for a draw with both colors, and uh, I guess uh, at least mentally this helped him a lot. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, of course, uh, the energy level yeah becomes very different uh, if you like win this game or if you lose this game. Yeah, I mean, that much is going to be talked about how pivotal that game six was. Um, getting back to an incident that I don't think we've heard your take on was the Magnus Carlsen incident where he twisted the knight and he threw his hand back. And I think most chess players would agree, especially because there was no logical move with the knight, that there was no intent. But still, the rules do say whether someone's at the board or not, you have to verbally say, I adjust or je do. So now that we're far removed from the match, do you have any issue with what happened uh, during that incident? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, somehow I think uh, there is, was some uh, story between me and Hikaru back in 2015 on the World Cup. And uh, yeah, to a li little bit, you know, to uh, speak uh, about, about that case. Uh, so it was like about castling with two hands or something. But in general, <laughs> I think uh, he realized that this very rule of like touch move for well, for quite some times, yeah, so it was like not once or twice, I think it was like, uh, I mean, okay, that's like his habit, yeah, so never say something. And uh, my problem was actually that the arbiter who was sitting there, like, and recording moves, and then, okay, when it was like Blitz or Armageddon, okay, uh, it was like also, like three arbiters there, and okay, no one ever, even uh, ever uh, interrupted. And uh, no one ever said, like, I'm on, okay, so uh, do something. So I guess uh, right after this, it was some, some minor changes to the federal rules. About okay, if arbiter says if he sees a violation, he should have, he should interrupt. Yeah, he should like uh, uh, make uh, someone you know follow the rules and so on. And um, I would say it's a general uh, issue with uh, most of the tour chess tournaments. So I mean, of course, when they're speaking about some tournaments with like 100 uh, games played simultaneously, you basically don't have enough people, and it's. Um, uh, probably everyone is responsible for his own board, yeah, and uh, he should, I don't know, so stop the club, call the arbiter, and so on. But here, I mean, basically, uh, I don't really see um, uh, if it's uh, some such huge violation, I don't think so, but in general, yeah, I mean, if there is an arbiter, he should at least uh, pay some attention to what's going on. And uh, uh, frankly, <laughs> I don't think that uh, uh, two gentlemen uh, who are presenting their arbiters uh, team uh, were uh, somewhat interested in what's going on, uh, I mean, except like checking, uh, official checking for, I don't know, some uh, hardware you, you, you bring with yourself. Yeah, so in general, I would like uh, to, to see some more dedication from the arbiters uh, during uh, the game. So, for example, I mean, okay, you cannot, uh, I mean, for example, like in, okay, in football, yeah, okay, you have this war, yeah, so uh, you, for example, are in, um, uh, I don't know, in uh, NFL you have this challenge, yes, yeah, so and yeah. so on. But uh, every time you have a lot of arbiters which are following the game closely, they, 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 if they see a violation, they interrupt anyway. But in our, I mean, in chess, basically, I mean, okay, there is not such, uh, there is perhaps not such, uh, not such tradition, yeah, to to sit uh, near the board and look closely. But yeah, that's what uh, <laughs> I would probably expect, or maybe okay, if you have like ten cameras, then maybe you just don't pay attention. You don't, uh, I don't know. Uh, check your email uh, during the uh, during the match. You don't, uh, you, I don't know, Google or read Wikipedia or whatever, yeah, or uh, find some memes on the internet or whatever they uh, they were basically doing. Uh, and uh, I guess, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what hopefully will uh, be changed in the future. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, basically the attitude yeah, of people because basically uh, being just arbiter, especially on a high high level event is uh, just you um, should uh, attend uh, the, the you know you should be presented the playing call but uh, basically here you're uh, 
your responsibility ends. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's how most of um, uh, people think. Yeah, and that's that's Alice, uh, the kind of the way most of the arbiters act. So I think this uh, should be some, somewhat improved. But uh, I guess uh, you know I wouldn't be too happy if uh, anyway I don't know, like accidentally or not accidentally touch a piece. I mean, okay, obviously okay, the, the knight moves in that case almost loses or something. Yeah, so it's quite unfortunate. Uh, but uh, I mean, okay, technically yes, yeah. If you, if you didn't say something, okay, you probably have to move with the, with the knight uh, in that case. But uh, speaking of uh, people who are sitting there and not paying any attention to what's going on uh, in the match, is uh, yeah, I think it is quite unfortunate. Okay, it's very fascinating thoughts. I'm uh, just curious, if you were at the board and the exact same incident occurred and you witnessed all of it, you would have said something, it sounds like. Uh, well, after, you know, after the match with Hikaru, of course, I would uh, uh, I would do this. But, I mean, at some point, uh, <laughs> during, uh, I think during the Blitz tournament uh, in, um, in Moscow, this World, uh, World Rabbit in Blitz, I think I had some Blitz game against uh, Mikhail Serin. And uh, yeah, in the very opening, the guy just uh, touched the touched the pawn. Okay, touched or advanced uh, or adjusted, but he didn't see something. And uh, I mean, clearly making him uh, make this move would probably win the game for me immediately. But if it's all right, so uh, don't uh, don't be too strict to the kid. But <laughs> he ended up beating me in that game, so I was a little bit uh, you know a little bit pissed <laughs> uh, you know afterwards. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, the rules uh, are the same for everybody, and uh, you know this. Then you touch, you move. Is somewhat uh, you touch. Uh, I mean, somewhat you teach kids uh, when they, you know, uh, come to the chess club for the first time. Yeah, so that's uh, quite a nice rule, and uh, <laughs> I would be happy and if uh, everyone would follow it. Okay, fascinating. Uh, well, I want to go out with a different kind of question. Um, you know, obviously, we want to. Uh, you know, you're going to grow from these games and from the experience, and we hope to have you back here, but. Let's not forget that you did win 800,000 euro, and that's not a small amount of money. So Dubai has all kinds of fun things to buy, all kinds of luxury cars and watches and everything. Um, is there anything you've had your eye on that you're going to use uh, the nearly $1 million to, to buy? Uh, any kind of uh, you know, present to yourself for what you endured the last seven months? Well, I don't think I deserved any present for this match, for frankly speaking. Yeah, but in general, okay, maybe uh, yeah, I still got to find a place to live in Moscow, so I think I'll... I'll, I, I'll try yeah, to, to figure out maybe uh, in, in there's something let's say in, uh, in the reality <laughs> <laughs> okay well yeah it's uh, not, nothing can buy the world championship that's of course the biggest prize but anyway we thank you so much for your time Jan thank you